Kilo. Please welcome to the us. Alright, what do we got here? Yeah. People from all over are coming to see him. Gonna be the wolf act, son of a gun. You're gonna keep up the hustle to the song. Hey folks, welcome to the show that punches you in the face with information, but in a good way. My name is Mark Tobri, and in today's show, I'm joined by Adrian Ferranda and Reese Adams. And today we are going to be talking about Dad Bod 2.0, how gym junkies stay in shape while life gets in the way. And gentlemen, if you mind for a moment, I'm just going to uh, share an experience that I had recently on, on this topic. Uh, I was on Facebook recently and I put on Facebook... Um, Men don't have babies. Pretty right. accurate. P pretty accurate, right? Men, <laughs> men don't have babies. I, I, got, I got slammed on Facebook for, for men not having babies and, and <laughs> how dare you? Okay, maybe I didn't put it to that exact that words, but basically my point of the post was, uh, you know, if your excuse is you're not going to the gym because you, you just had a baby and you're a man, right, I gotcha. it, it's kind of like, well, dude, you, you don't have a baby. And yeah. I know it's a bit of tongue in cheek because obviously, you know, as a father, you're going to look after the child as well and you yep. share responsibility. Um, and I completely get that. And obviously, you know, kids... Uh, uh, we're, we're dads. Uh, this, Reece, maybe not so much. Maybe. He's, he's, <laughs> I'm <known. laughs> uh, The Bachelor here. Well, you're on like season 227 of The Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, but point being, obviously dads have a huge role to play in, um, in child's development. Undoubtedly. Uh, and obviously when you have you a child- undoubtedly? <laughs> that's a good pun. That's, that's a, a good, good pun. pun. Oh undoubtedly. Um, und undoubtedly, you know, men, men have a huge role to play in child's development and staying in shape and going to the gym is also something very important. And I think it's something that uh, a lot of men out there struggle. So we thought we would make this show, uh, Two Dads and a Bachelor, uh, giving you our tips of how we've made physical culture work for us, even though you know life has its things that get in the way and make it very, very hard to do the things and uh, all those challenges. So, uh, Adrian, how have you found being dad 2.0? Um, well, it's just I think I've become probably more time efficient since being a dad because I think every hour, every minute counts. Um, so like I essentially live by my calendar. So every spare moment it's like what am I doing in this hour? It's like, you know, I've got this day with family. I've got this time with family. Then I've got, okay, this time in the gym. I've got that time to go to the gym. I've got this time to cook and prepare. You were in so the military though, so it must be easy for you though. Uh, not, well, I mean, that's a, oh, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> hate not the fact that I was in the military and that makes it easy for me. I guess that's maybe habits I've picked up from that. Um, so but, basically just But it's not easy for anyone. Correct. Yeah. But, but you make it, it's just a habitual way of life. Though. It does. It becomes easier. I would say when it becomes more habits, um, but it's not easy for anyone. No, you got to be yeah, exactly you gotta be, right. You got to be on it's, point. Um, yeah, and it's I think uh, yeah. That's but what, the, what shits me to tears is the way when when you get guys and they're like, "Oh, I just had a kid," uh, so he has trained. I just got a kid. I'm not trained. I was like, "Okay, cool. I yeah. just had a kid. That's awesome. Congratulations." But you still got to go to work. You still got to do all these other yeah, things, exactly. don't you? Like um, maybe you got some time off, but just to say, oh, well, I'm not doing anything because I just had a kid. It, it seems to me a little bit like reactive and you yeah. can still do things. Like and, this is the reason I'm not doing it. I mean, uh, to be Isn't perfectly it? honest, I think you probably found the same thing. Reese. you probably haven't had this experience so much, but you know, when babies are born, they usually just want mum. Yeah. At least, at least that's been my experience because yeah. last time I checked, I don't have tits. No. You're looking a little bit- They're getting fuller. Yeah, they are. <laughs> you, just, well, you, were, you were training for like an hour before the show to get that pump on. Exactly right. I've got to say you are looking pretty yeah. pretty snick, you know. No, right. you, yeah, that's good. Uh, so yeah, I mean, for the most part, I mean, I think, you know, that ages of zero to one, I know for my two boys, zero to one, uh, mm. dad's role, you know, now my mm. oldest being, you know, five, uh, since three years old, I found like the scale of time has been, it was all mum, but then when he turned three, now it's all dad and yeah. it's all in three, four, five. And now as he gets older, it's more and more dad. And when it started, um, when he was first born, you know, the thought of dad putting him to bed was like, no, it's not going to happen. Mm. It's, it's yeah, I get sent out of the room. Yeah. What are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> what, what? I want mummy. Uh, yeah. Now it's, who do you want to put you to bed? Yeah. It's all daddy. And I think, um, you know, as that evolves. So my point being to this point is uh, there is there is time just because mm -hmm. you've had a kid. Uh, you don't just sit around. Uh, I don't know about Reese. What, what have you found in, in this? What have I found? <laughs> I was just going to ask Adrian if it's the same for him because – I'd like to get Adrian's take on this. One hundred percent. When um, you know, I think I in anticipation, I kind of um, like because training for me is a very high priority. 
And I think that's, you know, when you're making it a high priority, then you will make time for it. So I knew when uh, my son was born that I was just like, okay, I'm going to see how sleep goes. I'm going to definitely train three times a week. I'm going to do this on those three days a week. What were you training though previously? Um, uh, before that, what did I do before that? Uh, Life before kids. Do was that, that strong man? No, not really. Or? <laughs> not really. Everything's just black up until that point now. <laughs> you did, just you like, did, strong, oh, man. You did strong man stuff though, didn't you? Yeah, was that I think around it was more strong man strength based. Though, from yeah. memory, I was, I was yeah, roughly doing stuff What was stuff that after? Like that. No, no, that was definitely before. It was definitely before. Yeah, I think a lot of strong man stuff hey, at the time. What do, you, what do you got there? I got some alpha GPC. Yeah. This... um. Yeah. I, I feel I feel if I might just put this to the camera for a second, I feel like this um this episode is brought to us by our unofficial sponsors who aren't actually <laughs> sponsoring us. Designs for Health, thank you, but not actually our sponsors. This is Alpha GPC. We've uh, Alpha GPC'd ourselves about what three droplets before the show. I had three droplets. What does Alpha GPC do? Um, gets me wired. Gets my brain all tingling. <laughs> ready to fire do you have a scientific answer to that no no, no you're out yeah so but basically it, yeah it's, it's a choline donator correct uh, a yeah. colon donator <laughs> exactly you're what it is in, you need one of those <laughs> I need, need a new i've been colon. taking this rectally so i'm assuming that's the right way <laughs> is that why it's got a long spout on I it don't. <laughs> <laughs> this conversation is <laughs> <laughs> And dads, that's why you should tune in to us <laughs> for all your colon needs. No, uh, no so um, getting back on this track, tell me about your, uh, I suppose, origin stories of how you got into training. Um, I'm going to put it to mainly pop culture. Oh, yeah? <laughs> My pop culture. Um, I credit to me joining the military as Arnold Schwarzenegger in Commando. Right. Um, great movie. If you haven't seen it, probably stop this podcast, go watch that. Um, <laughs> Don't actually stop this podcast. How, how old were you when you joined the military? Um, I enlisted into the reserves when I was 17. So I had to get my parents to sign off on that and everything. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so you, you didn't wait around. till the end of school or anything No, like I was that? like, yeah, I signed, enlisted like right as year 12 was coming to an end. Um, use reserves as a kind of like a little foot in the door to, cause it's a, usually a four year contract when you sign up. And I was like, if I go four years and fucking hate, this is going to be a nightmare. Um, liked it and then went full time after that. So how long were you in the military for? Ten year total. Ten years. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And you went all around like Afghanistan and things like this. Yeah, most places. So I went to East Timor and Afghanistan to well, uh, deployment there. Uh, East Timor when I was roughly around twenty one, two thousand eight. Yeah. yeah. What was training like in the in the military? Yeah, it was good fun. Um, it was. Um, I think uh, getting out now and becoming a personal trainer. There's a. I always kind of reference back and I was like, oh. I, Reckon I should have done it this way. There's where I could have improved here. Um, what do you mean? Probably around, definitely around nutrition wise. Um, no, no, but what do you mean I should have done it this way? Oh, just like in terms of how I structured my training, what I was doing. Oh, when um, you were in the, in the when military? When I was in the military. Right. Um, from what I know now. Um, probably oh, knowing, yes. yeah, yes. especially probably around nutrition. Um, so, yeah, for an infantry soldier, usually the, um, the macronutrients were like, nicotine, caffeine, and hate. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was really all we um, fed ourselves on. So now knowing it's actually protein, fats, and carbohydrates would have made a big difference. Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Reese, you? How do I get into training? <laughs> How do you get into the military? No. You got a brother yeah. in the military, you, get, yeah. <laughs> you want to know how my brother got into the military? Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, well, how like, did you get into training? What was your origin story? So for me, a friend had some weights in his backyard and uh, we started doing it and I happened to be stronger than him. So, you know, when you when you do well at something, you tend to want to do more of it. Mm. And um, yeah, it just started from there. And then, yeah, just being like wrestling with friends and being able to be the stronger one. It's like how do I, you know. You were the get, skinny kid when you started out. Yeah, so I guess that obviously, so being the skinny kid, but strong mm. and then and then trying to put <laughs> you, some muscle on. You, you would say you had like, was it like, a, <laughs> what do you whip I whip it, I whip, <laughs> whip it. That's why you have such a strong affinity to whippets because when you started before you had the transformation of the physical <laughs> I specimen. I have a lot of respect for whippets. <laughs> you were. <laughs> <laughs> you were, you, you actually looked a like a whippet. <laughs> I, I was a very skinny kid, yeah. Yeah, so basically on the topic of whippets, I was kind of like a whippet when I was younger. So I was six foot two and 65 kilos. <laughs> You're taller than you are now. <laughs> no, I'm six <laughs> foot two now. Hey, hey, hey. So you're back when I was six foot two. So, sorry, I was- You say six foot two and 65 kilos? Hey, slow, 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 slow down. So, so I was like 15 years old yeah, okay. and I was six foot two. Yeah. 
and I weighed 65 kilos. So oh God. at that height, 65 kilos is quite light. Yeah. And then in the, the first year of training, I put on 15 kilos. So. Are you sure you're six foot two? I am now. I don't know because okay. we're around the same height and I'm not six foot two. That's I'm taller than you, mate. I'm, he's tall. Yeah. He's tall. Yeah, he's tall. <laughs> so that, that is why, though, you have such a strong affinity for whippets. Yeah, I can relate. <laughs> Do you know any whippets that got jacked after 15, though? Hey, hey if <laughs> you go, go on Google yeah. and look Jack jacked, th it's there. Okay. Is that, is that actually a thing? I don't know how real it is. You know, Photoshop's a thing these days, but there's some jacked whippets on there. Right. So, so I wanted to talk about and open up to this concept of physical culture. And uh, if I consult one of these brilliant books that I might have made uh, – Yes, this is a shameless plug for personaltrainermentoring.com. We ran a workshop for personal trainers. For your personal trainer needs, personaltrainermentoring.com. That's the place to be. Uh, thanks. But uh, what is physical culture? Well, Adrian, the mid-19th century phrase defined by the Oxford Dictionary as the sum total of society's activities and attitudes connected with physical development education. Now, the reason why I wanted to bring this up was because uh, when you talk to a lot of people in training, they think about, you know, I am a bodybuilder, I am a powerlifter, I am a strong man. For me, uh, by the way, thanks for asking me my origin story, I'll tell you. Uh, my origin story started <laughs> when I saw the ultimate warrior, WWE, WWF back then, now WWE, um, the ultimate warrior ran down the ring in WrestleMania 4, shook the ropes and then picked up Hulk Hogan and the guy was absolutely shredded, jacked. He's the way, you know, you had the, the, the crowd captivated. Uh, he's the way you wanted to look. So for me, looking at the Ultimate Warrior as a uh, four, four year old, uh, five year old, I'm like, yes, this is, um, this, is, this is how you want to look. You want to look like a, a warrior. You want to be the Ultimate Warrior. Anyway, Can I. Can we started, include a photo of him when you're talking about that? Just so uh, that that's production's issues, not, not mine. Okay. So um, we'll, we'll leave that up to production. Production, let's, if you're listening, put that. a photo. Reese has requested. Uh, and a whip it too, if you can put a whip it in as well. Also, bonus Arnold Schwarzenegger point. in Commando <laughs> with the M60 or carrying the log. Either None one. with Alyssa Milano. <laughs> Alyssa Milano? Was it in that? Was his daughter. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Alyssa Milano, like the. Yeah, she was a child. Is she video. like a singer? No, no, she uh, was on that show, Charmed. Oh, yeah, oh, that's his yeah. daughter. No, in the movie. Oh, she I thought she was actually. She's, <laughs> that movie's not real. Arnold Schwarzenegger's daughter. Arnold Schwarzenegger was never a commander. Anyway, back to my origin <laughs> story. Uh, anyway, so that was a big impact. I started off as the fat kid at school. Called Pick Chop, Picked On, all that kind of stuff. Uh, my school that I actually went to, East Doncaster, now doesn't actually exist as a primary school because it was the first school in Victoria to have to merge, and we merged with merged with a school called Warrendite. Warren, no. I don't even know what school it's pretty university. far away. No, yeah, it wasn't Warren died. It was something starting with W. Anyway, we, we became Doncaster Gardens. And um, so anyway, uh, that was that. And um, I got into weights. I lose weight. I lost weight. Um, that really, really rechanged the way mentally I related to life and I related to things. And as a result, I started doing a lot better in school. Um, set a goal for myself to get, you know, a merit award uh, on, on my report card, which is basically half Bs, half As, and you're allowed one subject you got to see. And I achieved that. And that really started to change the direction of my life. So it all started for me with uh, training. It all started as the cal catalyst was uh, losing weight, doing something that I thought, looking at myself differently, changing my identity, and then essentially that uh, instigated the intellectual change to then me go off and, and achieve other things. And that was really the beginning. So I suppose the reason why, I, then I got into bodybuilding, I, and I think some of you know I came last at my first bodybuilding mm. comp and all these things. But I suppose the point that I'm getting at here is when you do get into these things, you ascribe a meaning to yourself as I am the bodybuilder. And that mm. was for me for a long time. I wore that hat of being the bodybuilder. Mm. Um, and it was a very damaging one because you know when you are the bodybuilder, you're in this world of, and it, that the hat, you know, to be truthfully honest, it never really fit, fit. it didn't fit. Um, I wasn't a, a bodybuilder, I didn't really fit into that lifestyle. I was much more than that. So introducing this concept of physical culture, really uh, the reason why I wanna bring it up, I know you wanna bring it up, is because you can have a, like, let's let's examine the, the meaning first of all. It's the sum total of society's activities and attitudes connected with physical development education. And I think that's something that we should all strive for, uh, is to have a continual physical element to mm. your life that is also interwoven with a social element and i think that's where going to the gym brings a lot of people a lot more happiness and a lot more connectivity because when you go to the gym it's not just about going to the gym you know i'm doing a workout i'm solely getting a better body you go to the gym you meet people 
Mm. You know, I met you through the gym. Hey, I met you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it's we we got into training and you you established connections, friendships, and often those friendships and connections last a very very long time. So it's having this idea of physical culture in your life, and I think to the topic of what we're talking about today, which is you know dad point dad bod two point I think really like having that is is essential and obviously that's something you want to pass down mm. to your kids as well of that idea of your body you only get one body your body's going to be with you for the for all of your life you know you're not going to get a new one um and it how the way i think of it is it houses your physical uh, sorry your spiritual essence yeah so if you think of your body as as the vessel that's housing your spiritual essence and as the egyptians would say um matter without motion is is sorry um matter without uh, spirit is meaningless and spirit without matter is motionless. So obviously they need both. And that's where, you know, the, 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 when people go to the gym, they feel a very much a connection or a spiritual, it's their uh, meditation of sorts. In, yeah, 100%. In some ways. That's exactly how I would see it as well. And that's how I, um, uh, a big mindset shift change that even brought me to this place uh, in an enterprise and asking you for a job here was that it was- Feel um, free to use the actual name of the place like as much as you like. It's what? just it, enterprise fitness. The enterprise more fitness. the more you can insert okay. the business name inside of what we're doing today, okay. the, the branding is is yep. yeah top shelf. Thanks. Do you want me to go from the top there? Yeah, from the top, okay. please. Yeah, well, that's what brought me to enterprise fitness in the first place. It was um, it was that uh, that connection to the place. I remember because I started off as a Wolfpack uh, mentoree here, and um, I remember from the first seminar, I walked in and I saw everything in here. I'm like, oh, it's a small space, but you look at it, and everything has its exact place where it needs to go. And it was like the most. You walk into any other gym, no way it's like laid out the way this is like this is bang for your buck space like if you had the space of let's say a big commercial gym or a big box gym it would be like 10 times better it was like everything was precision measured and you could, like, you could tell that from like anyone who knows anything about training it's like okay i know he's got those specialty bars there and he's laid them out that way and he's fit that bench in there and it's just like completely maximized on space and it's someone who does take that that pride and appreciation in it and it was like it's it's what's um you know it's what's kept me here it's like the um you know it's this whole thing is a, it's a spiritual journey into physical culture it's like it's not like something that yeah i need to do that oh yeah i should get in shape it's like well i can't not be in shape yeah. Almost. And I really feel like being in shape or at least having a practice of physical culture yeah. essentially helps you be your best. Yeah. And, I, and that's the thing with training. When people say, you know, oh, I just, I just got a new job. I'm not training. It's like, well, I, I just, you know, I had a kid. I'm not training. It's like, well, for me, I don't feel I can be my best if I'm not training. Yeah. You know, and, and that might be a psychological disorder. Uh, of some sort but but i feel like it's not because i'm actually giving to the well-being of my 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 body my mm. physical self um and tuning that up to make sure that i can rep my spirit can ha like house the body that i'm in can mm. house my spirit to live its most uh fulfilled life yeah. if that makes sense so when when life gets in the way i think that's when you really need to actually double down get up earlier schedule plan your day it forces you to be i think a better person it forces yeah. you to be more productive more yeah. efficient more effective uh, recently, on the other hand, has no idea what we're talking about. He's just looking at us <laughs> blankly, like, "What's this efficiency?" No, no I totally stuff? agree. Like, going to the gym definitely enhances every part of your life because it's that uh, you know when you're in the set, it's like you know, do I do this extra rep or do I just you know throw the towel in? So it definitely mm -hmm. makes you continually want to like do better in all areas of life. Yeah, there's just, nowhere else where you're finding that um that I guess that that drive and just going somewhere internal. Almost, it's like um, you know that that yeah, grinding that extra rep out, and it's just like squeezing everything, and it's like okay, just fatiguing. It's like, have I done enough? Can I do more? And then you start to question that with everything else you do. Can I do more? Can I do better? Where can I like? Where are the gaps here? Where's the, where are the leaks? Where can I tighten everything up? Where can I make me more efficient at doing this? So I got one for you, Adrian. Yeah. In the military, right? Yes. Uh, I would imagine that you were put through some very brutal training. I definitely had a few um, that stand out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's one that stands out? Uh, or there was um, there's two that come to mind. One was this. Um, so usually there's um, support courses that you do for um, so in in the infantry that is like specialised um, as a part of the unit. Uh, one was just for the podcast. Yeah. Just for people who know nothing about the military. What yeah. what is the infantry versus? 
Um, or the infantry are the guys who um, do all the hard work and everyone else is just rubbish. Um, that's pretty much, that's all you need to know. <laughs> like, like the, they're the grunts, aren't they? Yeah, that's they're what grunts. They're we, we're to just us. the gunslingers. Were you a paratrooper as well? Yeah, I was a paratrooper for four years. I heard, uh, I heard, well, I met a paratrooper once and he said- Was um, it me? <laughs> no, it wasn't you. It's when I was teaching at the AIF. Okay. And he said, um, if you meet any other paratrooper, trooper, tell them they're fucked. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. You want, you want <laughs> that, that was his you message. So that wanted, me? Yeah, I'm delivering it to you. Okay. Uh, yeah. You're was fucked. that it? Okay. Yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> no, well, the, the reason why he said you're fucked is because because he said my knees are so fucked. Yeah. Is he, his exact words, and he said, you know, with paratroopers, essentially it's the equivalent of jumping off a two story house uh, yeah. when you land, and you do that like multiple times a day, and you just fuck. No, nah, not multiple times. I did 21 jumps overall. Right over a four year span. Oh, okay. So multiple they times. Might, they might not just have liked this guy. Yeah, maybe. Just like, they just kept fucking back <laughs> up. Back up, back up, back up. The test dummy regiment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, you yeah, know, it's definitely hard on the body. Um, I've definitely had some rough jumps, um, you know, either too windy um, or, you know, colliding with people under the plane because I was too lazy to kind of drive out the door. It's, it's a hard one to explain. What do you mean drive out the door? It's like, um, it's like a static line. So essentially you're just in lines of people and everyone's just running out of a door. So it's just like, you know, it's like, all right. So you're usually meant to leave a bit of spacing, but no one really trusts the air force and that they're going to put drop us on the right, like LZ. So everyone's like, okay, there's only a limited bit of land here. Let's all just run out the door. <laughs> so you're just kind of stuck behind each other. And um, one, I had a real heavy pack and I was kind of, um, I was the first one out. So you're meant to kind of drive out with the leg and the slipstream of the plane kind of catches you and pushes you in the right path. And I just kind of fell face first out and so did the other guy on the other side and we kind of collided <laughs> under the back and I just went ah! and kind of just got winded. And then after <laughs> just the parachute opened, everything was fine, but I was just kind of sore and we both kind of smiled and then landed safely. So that was fine after that one. Another one was it was too windy. So this was for... Um, people who are training to dispatch. So a dispatcher is just making sure everyone's getting out of the door okay. So you've got a line of people. So we just needed us, we were called stooges, essentially just running out the Fitting door and out practicing. Just, yeah. <laughs> just feel it like get them getting a tick in the box. So it's like you have to get so many people out of the plane to get this qualification. Um, so it was like their last day of training and they needed to fit X amount in. And it was a very windy day. And I remember it was like this... Um, this uh, CSM, he was the guy running the course. What's and the, CSM? Uh, oh, it's just, he just runs the course. Okay. So he's just the guy in charge. So they're usually like 20 year veterans in the uh, And he was just like this whole, he's kind of like, you know, he'd smoke a pack a day and had that real raspy voice, kind of like classic military, um, like drill sergeant you would expect on a, on a type of like an American type mm -hmm. movie. Anyway, there's the, um, they get a call for the wind and usually it's like over 15 knots is, or 10 knots is too fast from memory and she's like the girl who was um getting trained she's like he's like 15 and she's like <laughs> and she's like shaking his head yeah so as in that's not the knots so <laughs> so he's like that's not the amount of wind because it was too fast for us to jump and he and she's like gives him the one just under so she says nine and he's like <laughs> Oh, fuck. So we got out and I hit the ground and my parachute was essentially just dragging me across the ground. Oh, so I kind of pulled my hip on that one and everyone was just like limping off the ground after oh, that. Geez. So I had to like, um, so my parachute was dragging me. So I had to unsling that and that the kind of, yeah. So you're actually uh, pretty lucky in a way to get away as unscathed as you yeah, did from I, the Yeah, I would put that down to training as well. Um, I think, um, you know, I used to like doing heavy deadlifts, heavy squats. Um, I think deadlift saved my spine a lot from a lot of pack work that I did in there, like my back's- What were you pretty, deadlifting back then? Um, the highest I got when I was in the military was 220. Um, yeah, and so I was just really, I was just keeping it, it was just all strength-based work mainly that I was doing. Yeah, what was the experience that stood out? Was that the actual experience that stood out? Because when I was going, where I was going with uh, this was- Jumps wise, probably, oh no, I've got a few. No, because I was going to ask you what was yeah. the most the the, the, the painful wise in terms yeah like of what's something training? that's yeah. pushed your body and I can yeah. share mine and then we'll go to Reese um, but what's something that's pushed yeah. your body One, past that like yeah. made you a hard man to um, 
punished you. Yeah, punished pun- me. He's wearing a Punisher so, t-shirt for yeah. the audio. But what's punished you, Adrian? One was the uh, definitely there was this um, this pack march we did, and it was um, the end of this kind of um, this heavy weapons. Can you course. just explain what a pack march is? Pack march is you just have a, a <clears throat> pack on your back and you just walk for stupid amounts of time. That's what's a stupid amount of time. Um, let's say this one was just twenty kilometers, but it wasn't the distance that was the issue. It was the yeah. weight. Um, so we essentially each had about 2,000 rounds of ammunition um, that made our packs weigh about 80 kilos. Um, so, so you had, a, you had a, um, a, a Reese on your back. He weighs about 80 kilos. Close to the 90, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, on top of that, you had to carry James machine gun equipment, back. which added, you know, each part of that tripods, you know, ten, that's another 10 kilos on that as well. Um, so, and that will sharing around. So it's a lot of weight actually. It was a lot of weight. It, we, we did it overnight cause it was hot days as well. Mm-hmm. So we started at night and it took us nearly 12 hours to get 20 kilometers. We're walking that slow. Um, so I just remember like looking at the ground and just remembering one foot in front of the other. And it's like, that's all I was thinking for the whole 20 kilometers. And it got to a point where I was just like cramping and seizing up beyond belief and like you'd get down and you'd need someone to help pick you back up and then there was guys like who because it was dark as well you get too close to the edge of road and just falling over then you having to pick them up as well so it was just like yeah it was 20 kilometers of that and i saw for a good four days after that like walking like saddle soreness and then there was another course this was probably just this was probably harder saddle soreness aren't you yeah 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 (laughs) Riding, too much riding, really. <laughs> too much riding. <laughs> yeah. Um, another course was like, it was pretty much a 24 hour um, just physical challenge. So it, it started off um, us essentially just um, running away. So it was like, we're getting attacked and we had to flee back to a certain point And that was about a five kilometer run. Um, so we were just, um, kind of, we took a pretty cruisy route, um, the guys I were with because we kind of knew it was coming. So we just kind of went and hid in the bushes for a bit and we just strolled back and took our time. Uh, cause we knew, and then after that, that started and then it was a, like a 24 hour, um, just torture. We essentially had to carry these, um, Zodiac boats up five kilometer beach, um, which is a very slow process. The same thing happened again, started cramping up by the end of that. Then we you needed some of, um. Mark Schaus's KTS Solutions electrolytes. Hundred percent. We also we stock them at Enterprise, just in case. <laughs> just email Amelia or info at enterprisefitness.com.au and we can hook you up. Anyway, if you're in the military, yeah. definitely call us. <laughs> yeah. uh, back to your story. Yeah, and um, by by about I don't know, probably about for a good 12, 10 hours into that one, I remember kind of falling asleep while. Again, doing a, a long pack march, uh, not as heavy this time, but I remember it was like I was so fatigued, um, dream and reality were blurring really? and I could um, like things that were happening in my dream, I was seeing things that I wasn't actually seeing in real life. Mirages. Uh, yeah, just like yeah. mirages. One, It was just like random stuff too. It was just like, just made no sense. And then I would look like back and it bunny? wouldn't be there. One was, it was just like a wheelbarrow in the middle of the bush. <laughs> And just full, well, maybe full of the idea was like yeah. you're gonna jump in the wheelbarrow and someone's yeah. gonna. And the other one was like the Pope, just in the middle of the road. <laughs> the Pope. Yeah, he just had that big stupid hat on. What, what, the big, the, what, what, what does the Pope mean to you, Adrian, at uh, that time? It didn't mean anything. <laughs> doesn't mean it was blessing, not a religious it experience. Was. <laughs> it was just it was just it really like random. it wasn't a religious experience. You had the Pope visiting you when you were about yeah, to. I, I didn't feel like I didn't feel like I was all holy or nothing. I was just like, what the fuck is the Pope doing here? Yeah, but he was gone quick. You so. Got up the hill quicker yeah. than you did. Um, yeah, but after that, that was again another few days of um, soreness and recovery. But um, yeah, they, those are two that probably stand out. How do you, how do you think they've uh, shaped you as a person? Um, oh, at the time, it was just very annoying. <laughs> it was very hard. Yeah, but um, I mean, when you look back now on those moments, it's like- you Yeah, know, it's like it was a rite of passage of those times, I guess. It was like something you um, knew people had done before you. Um, so it was just like, yeah, it just feels good after the fact. Definitely, just like a tr- hard gym session feels good after the fact. It's like, fuck yeah, I got through it, but I reckon I could have done better on this. And yeah, maybe that time will come again when I try that again. But when you look at like something like that, because obviously, you know, we talk about the bell curve a lot yeah. um, with a lot of different things and there's like a little bit, no effect, there's an optimal effect. And then obviously with the military, you're on the complete other side of the extreme of exercise where yeah. it's not actually about a result. It's just about mental. Yeah, I think sometimes the, yeah. And I think sometimes it's probably pushed that to that, limit outside is probably where they're what they get wrong is where it's like everything's got to be a smash session 
So it's like everything's got to be difficult. Everything's got to be challenging. Not like let's build yes. and construct and make sure there's we're There's no moving. performance time. Yeah, yeah no performance. Yeah. If they looked at it more well, like- Well, sorry, everything's performance. So there's, you know, practice training performance. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not actually training. Everything's just performance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, um, yeah, let's, let's build. And I think uh, if they took the ethos of like, how do we not- make these people break in training when they're doing that hard stuff, like do that hard stuff. But, but just, yeah, we need, to, we need to not just build up to it, but build a good foundation so these guys, so we get longevity out of them. Yes. I think like that's- Get them doing the deadlifts, yeah, but exactly not get right. them doing the deadlifts for like absolutely infinite yeah, reps. Not, it's not like, like a, oh, you're gonna yeah, get- Not CrossFit, but yeah. somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> just like get them training, like I guess like if you manage it like a football team or an NRL team or something like that. So yeah. with training being, I mean, having that experience that you had when you're coming to the gym, I mean, I imagine that there's nothing that you could do in the gym that recreates that kind of training. No, unless of, I was, you know. Do you, do you miss it? Like that level of- Fuck no. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. I've done it. Done. Done. Right. So done. Yeah. Do you think everyone needs to go do something? Um, like? oh, yeah, I definitely don't think everyone needs to go do it. Um, I think it's good. If you really want to physically challenge yourself, maybe it's not for everyone. Like maybe not some gen pop just walks in and is like, fuck yeah, I'm just going to go for this 80 kilometer pack. Well, a lot of people are, you know, um, giving up. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, people tapping out all the time. Yeah, yeah. But no one wants to be that guy. Yeah. Yeah. What 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 would happen when they tapped out? Like, say you're on that 20k pack march. Yeah. And say oh, it would be like you know, it's like whispers later. It's like fuck that guy didn't fucking complete the stop. This guy's a bitch. <laughs> like, but, yeah. but would they just go back to camp kind of thing? Yeah, they'll just be yeah. like it, it, most of most of it would be like injury. But even then, it's like well, you soft cock. <laughs> All right. It's like you fucking your femur sticking out of your leg. It's like that. <laughs> you just wrap that up, man. <laughs> You'll be right. Should be, should be right. Should be right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it was like even if it's like yeah, it was like pushing beyond the part of broken was, um, and that was like you know a, a big part of it as well. It's like you if you're sore, you still keep going. And it was just like uh, no, other than no, your, no stopping. Other than your hip, did you pick up any niggles or anything like that? Um, from like, yeah, well, what happened think, to you? Um, I've always just had tightness in lower back hip around that. But, but that's um, not necessarily attributed to the military. Yeah, not necessarily. It's, it's probably just a, a yeah. In case any lawyers thing. are yeah. watching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly right. <laughs> um, now, that, I, I don't know if that is a compound of all that or it's just a compound of all my training. You know, it's just like, who knows? Um, but I wouldn't say directly relate it to that. Yeah, I mean, I've no, got- there was no one incident that I think I did break my ass actually on a job. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? I landed on was my that ass. With Tom? And, what's that? Or Bill? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I just um, yeah, I went on a jump. So you broke like a coccyx or something? Yeah, I, and I just I never got it he scanned, but I Tom could, broke yeah. it, and then Bill broke it. <laughs> so that was and after I, the fact, and I couldn't sit right for about a year. Um, like like 15 why minutes. are we just yeah. whining out about this now I don't know, like 15 <laughs> minutes and i'd be like hey, i have to stand up this hurts too much um i never actually got it checked out because i was afraid i would get discharged and like that fact of right. like i don't want to lose this it's like i'll just suck it up because i was like eh, it might be a more serious spinal ear in injury so i don't want to get in trouble i don't want to get kicked what, out what were you this. scared of fucking up what's that what were you scared of losing yeah, what do you mean? You said oh, you didn't want to lose this. What were you scared of getting losing? Getting kicked out. Oh, getting kicked out of the military. Oh, how, how many years had you been in since you did that? Oh, I did it in about 2011 or 10. How many years in was that? Um, when did I get in? Yeah, I enlisted 2007. So you only a couple of years into your 10-year uh, yeah. journey. Coming up to the end. Yeah. yeah. No, you weren't. Yeah. You would have been like four halfway. Years. No, four, four years. years. I did. Seven, eleven, yeah, then, then so did. four years. So yeah, four years in. So he just mm -hmm. done his first lot. Yeah, but then he went another six years. Mm. Yeah, after that. Mm. So he didn't, he didn't want to so, go out after yeah. the first four what, years. What so. made you get out? Um, oh, we just weren't going to war anymore. So I was like, oh, this isn't fun anymore. Not really. Yeah. Mm. It was a, just waiting around barracks, just to do fuck all. It was kind of. What um, year was that that you got out? 2014, I want to say. 2014? Yeah. You were so in there for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Reese, is there anything that comes to mind that's pushed you? Obviously, probably nowhere to the no, no, the no same degree as this guy, but have you had a training experience where it's like really pushed you and made you rethink and reshape your training? No, probably the most challenging thing I've had was, 
um, like when I was comp prepping. So comp prepping is great because mm. um, it's not like I wouldn't say it's like having a child, but it forces you to be more time conscious because yeah. you, you have so much to do in the day and it only often gets more and more and then you have to just um, sort of still fit everything in. So that was probably like doing – it got to the point where I was doing 90 minutes of cardio morning and night, training as well, um, clients. So that that's probably the most – mentally challenging just trying to fit everything in and you know the food gets lower and lower um but then physically the most challenging um i haven't really thought about this but just when you said it i'm like the thing that came to mind was rugby it had this psychopathic coach and we would do like a hollow body hold i didn't know what they called it at the time he just said lift your legs up and do a crunch um so <laughs> so we we're holding the position and he goes now punch yourself in the stomach <laughs> And we would do this. I don't know how long. Like it felt like probably a couple of minutes. But what age group was this? Oh, uh, maybe under sixteen. Okay, yeah. And we would do it for as long as he said. And yeah. then if someone stopped punching themselves or wasn't punching hard enough, <laughs> <laughs> we'd have to start again. That's fantastic. So, so that was that experience. Can we list that as a pun- hollow hold punches? We we'll list that as a new exercise. C one hollow hold punches yeah. because, because it was for hardening us. Yeah, fair enough. It works. Very hard. Yeah. Punch. <laughs> I'm hard thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's that's really bad. That's punny. That's punny of you. Um, yeah, my my one was when I um, competed for the first time in two thousand and four, um, and I really had no idea what I was doing in terms of competing. Like I was training twice a day, doing cardio, um, weights, and then my calories probably would have been maybe nine hundred, eight hundred. It was fuck all. Like I wasn't really eating anything at all. Um, and then just the prep was so long and I just got to a point where I got so skinny and emaciated. Like I, I was really like, if you look at it, How I was, was it? starving myself. It's probably a good year, uh, probably nine months like uh, to a year. Yeah. yeah. Cause I had this coach at the like time. Nine, 900 calories that whole time. Yeah. yeah. How, how heavy were you when you started and then got uh, on stage? I think I started at about 85. 80, 85, and then I got down to 68. Oh, man. Um, and the dumbest thing I've probably ever done was when I did that prep and wait for it. Um, so the guy I was getting prepped with, um, who's not around these days, I don't know what he's doing or where he is, but um, it's kind of a blessing and a curse, with, you know, one of those things. <laughs> not ruining but, anyone else's life. <laughs> but he said, um, you know, you know, bodybuilders dry. And you got to remember, I was like 19, 20, yeah, yeah. right? So I was very young yeah. and gullible and naive yeah. and all those kind of things. Just, oh, you know, I want to compete, oh, so I want to do get well. a coach who says, yeah, yeah, do this, just, you're going to say So he goes, oh, bodybuilders got to dry out. They've got to get rid of the subcutaneous fluid. Um, what you got to do is... Um, Four days out of the show, you're going to go, no, five days out of the show, you're going to do it for four days. You're going to go to a sauna. Um, you're going to stop drinking water for four days and you're going to go to the sauna <laughs> on top of that for four days in a row. <laughs> oh, so man. like think of, I, I think about some of the dumb shit that I've done like that, for example. I'm like, you know, I was very fucking lucky. And still training yeah. as well. Very, yeah. very lucky. still training as well? Yes, very <laughs> lucky um, that I got away with that. Uh, the robustness of, of the human body is, mm. is a marvel. But um, yes. yeah, so I stopped drinking water for four days and or just sipping as he advised. Mm. And um, then I was going to the sauna as well on top of that to hashtag dry out. Mm. Um, probably the worst four days. Um, but yeah, did, you get, I, did you get dry? Oh, I don't fucking know. I look like an Ethiopian <laughs> kid. That's what I looked like. You <laughs> see the photos of me. I was just so skinny and gaunt. <laughs> like there was nothing <laughs> <laughs> um, the machinist. You know, like Christian, yeah, it was pretty bad. I mean, sixty-eight Bale. kilos is pretty bad. I put on fourteen kilos in three days after that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you know, from the fluid retention, like you know, like straight away. Um, and Did you still get your shoes on? Oh yeah, I, I think I could. That was, yeah. But come to think of it, I think my shoes were actually a bit sore at the time. You know, like what's all? Like, why are my joints sore? And all that kind of, you got to remember, this was like pre Facebook, pre really like any any social media. It was just um, I thought this is what you did anyway. Like the following year, I had a friend. I was pretty bummed about it because I was like really quite obsessed with competing. I would have done anything. Well, nine like, months of focusing you, on that. One. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it was. Um, well, it was two years of of him kind of in my ear like because i think he started uh helping me out in like when i was 17 because i went to the gym and then um he's like oh you know you should compete and this and this and this and anyway it's just a terrible experience and then i remember him saying to me you know i'll be there at your comp i'll be there at your comp and then two weeks out of the comp he's like oh, i have to go on holiday and i was like oh but are you going to be on the comp he's like 100 oh, i'll be there and then three days before the comp it was like a thursday night i remember it um calls me up and it was interesting because my mum was at in england at the time he calls me up and he's like, oh, I can't come 
to the comp and I was like, oh, I didn't know what to say again. I was like, okay, whatever. Hang down the phone, started cry, crying, like bawling my eyes. I'm like, what the fuck do I do? I've just worked so hard. I have no fucking idea what I'm doing. So I rang up my cousin, cousin's like, come over and she'll help me out. She didn't know what the fuck she was doing, but um, drove over. I remember I stopped, I parked, I cried and then I <laughs> drove to my cousin's house. Like I was pretty devastated at the time. Anyway, I competed, um, did it. And I was definitely that guy on stage that you like, that guy shouldn't be on stage. Came last. Um, and uh, I think for me, that was a real catalyst of, you know, this isn't going to happen not only to me again, but this isn't going to happen to anyone I know. Um, because if someone comes into my contact and my care for, for uh, comp prep, I will take care of them ab above all else and make sure this never happens. So for me, that was a really um, big event because I often think, what if I came first that day? You know, I probably wouldn't, you know, at Enterprise, we've coached over 250 champions. Um, mm. you know, I remember there was a phase when I was coaching and Reese probably remembers that where like when I was at Doherty's, I was getting competitors from flying into state like every week for me to do comp, their comp prep and then they would win and I have the, you know, Miss Tasmania and the Miss Adelaide and then the Miss Victoria. And it was like, fuck, you, you can't get better than this. Mm. Um, but I think, you know, if I nailed it then, like I would not have any of you guys, like in terms of team enterprise producing the champions, the systems, all these things that we have today that we get to enjoy. It came out of that uh, real pain and that was a physical experience for me where I had to really dig deep and go, well, I don't want this to happen to anyone else. And I really had to study hard, learn hard. And that's actually what led me because it was actually undoing the bodybuilding mentality because you know, I didn't look like a bodybuilder you know, at 68 kilos. Like I was a guy who went to the gym, but it's like I wanted, I thought this is like what I wanted. Mm. And I, I, then I competed again in 2005, did somewhat better because um, I got the advice of Tony Doherty and did, it did a hell of a lot better, I should say. And then for that two years uh, between 2005, 2006, 2007, I competed again in 2007. Um, and then after that, like I really struggled with like, who am I? And, and that's where I really started to fall into like physical culture mm. and understand what physical culture is. And it's not just about, you know, powerlifting, strongman, bodybuilding, gymnast. It's you enjoy physical activity above all else. Yeah. And as a bodybuilder or as whatever, you're allowed to do strength training. You're yeah. allowed to do CrossFit if you want. Yeah. Like, not that you probably should, yeah. but you're allowed to do, um, you're allowed to do these, these, these exercises. You're allowed to do different things. You're allowed to think. And that actually brought so much more um, eloquence to my personal training in career. Cause now I was looking at people going, I'm no longer a bodybuilder. Like, I'm not just going to do leg press with you. I'm going to get you mobile. I'm going to get you strong. This is what you need. And was it really able to, to deliver a much com more complete, well, a complete package? And that's at the same time I got into the work of Western A. Price. Uh, and when he's, he's, you know, for the podcast, um, was a researcher, um, a dentist slash researcher. And in the 19th, 20s 1930s he went around to 15 14 was it uh isolated cultures and looked at how native cultures ate and then brought that back and he found that they're all lean and quite muscular mm. and it's like well the the physical culturists you know nutrition does have a big part in that because if you want to get the most out of your body you want to feel and this is why i hate the like if it fits your macros kind of thing because it's not like if it fits your macros is approach of what can i get away with Whereas my approach is yeah. always about what is optimal. Yeah. How, how can I live my best life? What is the best fuel for my body? Um, how can I optimize my expression? And in saying that, it's like, well, if I want to be my best physically, then I'm only going to eat the best foods. So I'm going to look for organic. I'm going to look for uh, pasture raised uh, produce and all this because I care about that because I actually want the best. Mm. Um, and I want to be my best so that because this only get one body, right? So uh, that's my little rant yeah it comes down to you like um what that value is and it's like yeah it's like that's what i want i'm making this a priority to do it this way i'm not like people will have a default of eating takeaway every night because it's like oh i'm busy at the moment so i'm just gonna eat shit because that's what i know mm. almost it's not yeah no it's like no it's like I'm busy. This is why I need to kind of double down. Correct. And because you're busy. Yeah, because I'm busy. Because you're busy, you I need, need to, to prepare more. Yeah, I need to prepare more. Yeah. Not that's like, ah, oh, fuck it. I won't prepare because I'm busy. It's like, no, I need to, no, I need to double down now. That's when you need to be I'm your busy. sharpest. Yeah. You need yeah, to be like, extra sharp when you're busy because you're, you're under the pump. So, yeah, it's like the person waiting for the perfect time to comp prep. It's like, no, there is no perfect time. No, perfect Set the time. date and make it a, a like a reasonable date. <laughs> to um get there and it's like yeah let's let's start this process and like you're saying it's just like 
where where can I find the time? It's like makes you so good at time management because it's like where where are those gaps? Where's that fifteen minutes? Yeah, I could get a walk in. That's you know x amount of calories. That's you know according to my, my steps. Let's get that activity up. All right, I can train this time. I can train that time. I know I need to go to sleep at this time. I can wake up now. <laughs> like you know, it's like it's all that. It's just makes. So I'll so give good. the definition. My definition of physical culture. Just before we move on, it's to be a physical culturist is to promote well-being and physical education with the frame of constant and never-ending improvement. That's my personal definition. The reason I share it because I believe that's what the definition of actual personal trainer is as well, and it's to teach physical culture. What I wanted to just change gears into was what advice do we have collectively uh, for the dads? You know, they've just had a kid. Uh, what, what I've just, I'm your client, right? Mm. I've just had a dad. Uh, I've just had a dad. <laughs> <laughs> just had a dad. What was his name? Uh, <laughs> Vince. Um, <laughs> so I just had a kid and, um, you know, time, time management is tough. Uh, mm. what, what do I do? What expectations should I, should I, you know, I'm a gym junkie. I usually go to the gym, but now I'm feeling like I need to take some time off. Like what advice talk me through it? What, what goes through your head? Uh, I guess, for, so, uh, I guess, coming here they are making time for it in a way it's like we're sitting down it's like okay but no they're not coming here let's say it's okay uh, it's just anyone yeah yeah yeah. it's like well do you like do you want this is it does start with that do do you want this first question would be like what what specifically do you actually do you enjoy doing this and it's like out of it like do do you actually want to train or do you feel like you have to because it's a, a pressure someone else is putting on you is it because your wife said oh you're getting a bit tubby and you feel like you need to do something or do you genuinely want to keep doing something about it that's where it's like that's what physical culture is to me it's like it's just who you are it's not and that's how you get long lasting results it's not i don't ever see a workout as something oh i have to do that at that time it's no it's like when can i work out it's like okay i'm gonna work out at this time i find it unfortunate that i don't have enough time in the day to train all day or physically capable of training all day. It's like, I wish I did have that management. Otherwise it's what I would do. It's like, I know I need a rest and recovery as well. So I want to make my time more, most efficient as well. Nothing better than when you go away on like a strength camp and you do like twice day sessions, they're the best. Yeah. And it's like, but you know, that's not, you know, you can't do strength camps all the time. We're going to bring our strength camps back, the enterprise strength camps. That'd be good fun. That'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think you answered it beautifully, Adrian, is really, it starts with, do you want this? Yeah. Like it really does. Hey, yeah. It's like, do, do you want to stick to the, because if you don't, then that's It's not fine. like that. Oh yeah, I need to. It's like that. It's like, no, I have to, I can't not do this. I can't live without this. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, don't use, don't use your situation as an excuse, even though, you know, there's things that might come up in your life and it's yeah, like, there are legitimate things. You, you, yeah. you gotta, I think for me, the way I, and again, I'm just going to speak personally. Like I had some situations with my second born, yeah. um, when he was born, that were, were very, very challenging. And I would say that I would not have got through them mm. if I did not stick to my routine. Yeah. And and what is my routine? My routine includes training. Um, mm. I think I would have got into a very dark place mm. uh, having not. And I mean, I remember like when my son was born the week before, I was training with Tyler Cosnett, one of the great master coaches here at Enterprise. Um, I maxed my high bar squat at 175 kilos. And the next week I was scheduled to do 180 kilos on my high bar. Um, I went in the next week, I did 120 kilos. Mm. That's how stress, lack of sleep, lack yeah. of food, uh, lack of everything. I struggled with 120 kilos, even though the week prior I did 175 easily. Mm. Um, so it's not saying that necessarily you like life circumstances, you're gonna PR every single week because that's often unrealistic. Yeah, exactly but I, I right. do think as we're talking about physical culture, there is something to be said about developing a routine that when the, and this is the way I see it, when the world goes to shit yeah. or your world goes to shit, you still have something in your life where you go, no, oh, you know what? I'm still in control, mm-hmm. even though like everything seems like it's burning to mm-hmm. like the world is burning. And, and let's face it, for, for some situations, the world is burning. But I think if you can just, uh, you know, darkness cannot exist even with if one candle is lit kind of thing, right? Um, if you yeah. just light that one flame, there's still light in yeah. the room, right? And you can't uh, get rid of that. And so I think it comes down to my two, probably I would say the, most, the two sexiest words in the English dictionary, it's discipline and consistency. 
I thought you were going to say reset. Reset. <laughs> reset. I'll take it. Yeah. You multiply that by time and then it's just like, it's all going to work out. It's like, yeah, it sucks now. And some people will take that hit as like, you know, ah, this has happened to me. So fuck it. It's all gone out the window. It's like, okay, I'm going to use this chance. Maybe I'll back off. Maybe it's what I need to back off a little bit at the moment. I'll still get in. I'll still do my reps. I might reduce the weight. I might reduce the length of the session. I might reduce the intensity I put into it. And it's like, so I can pick it up again in a week's time. Yes. So and it's, for me, some of it was just simply coming in yeah. at an hour. I'm going to do an hour. I, need, I know I need to warm up and mm. then I'd be really tight. My body would feel like shit. An hour of mobility. Yeah. And, and, then, yeah. and then I'm done. Yeah. You know, it's like, but, but the, the important thing there was, as the, you said, I, yeah. when I was able to, I was able to pick it up yeah. so much. Like, like nothing happened because I was still in my routine where I think a lot yeah. of people, they... Um, they, they let it go and then it's their routine's gone. So now they have to establish their routine again. Yep. And then they're also physically not as strong. So they're yep. like, oh fuck, what's the point of this? And then yeah, it's even harder. Yeah, they go so from two weeks to two months and it's like, but it's not that, that two weeks was harder, nothing. Yeah. And it was like, they're doing nothing. And then it's two months of doing nothing. And it's like, it's hard for me not to train. It's hard for me to not come in the gym. I don't like getting, like if I ever get sick, I was sick for a week and it was hard. Like I would have to go out for 20 minute walks. Otherwise I'd just go insane. I just feel like I'm like this battery that just keeps filling up and like spilling over and I just need to get rid of that energy. Otherwise, I'm just going to explode. Yes, yeah, so and you're like, a lot more happier person when you train too. Yeah, exactly, always. And that's why I always kind of create that. My training is like the foundation and everything kind of fills in around that as well. Obviously, if there's prior things I need to prioritize, there's things that need to be prioritized, but there will always be time for those training sessions. Even if it's, as you said, a 20-minute walk. Even if it's a 20-minute walk. Uh, and I think that's what's lost in today's society is that real aspect of, um, physical culture mm. of, of, you know, drawing back and going, right, well, um, and I think, you know, for the most part, I think kids, you need to get your kids exposed to, yeah, we're going to go to gymnastics. Yeah. Yes, we're going to go to jujitsu. This is the thing that you do. It's not like something you have to do. It's just what we do. It's yeah. Just like, it, yeah, you need to learn, like, of you learn mass, you learn how to do jujitsu. You learn yeah, how to exactly do, right. you know, uh, uh, if you're learning Italian, you're also going to learn gymnastics. Yeah. Like it's it's the physical language of the body and yeah. everyone, you know, really needs to take time to yeah. to do that. And what we already enlisted our son, he's two and he's in gymnastics already. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it's just like, yeah, I'd say like critical. Yeah. It's my, like, yeah, we, um, you know, backflip him before I know it. Yeah. My, my uh, five-year-old started uh, jujitsu today. He, uh, he loves it. It's great. Second second class. We're really looking forward to seeing... Give uh, Liam Fitzgerald a run for his money now. <laughs> we had a roll roll with him in no time. Yeah, yeah. You got to love him. Same height. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Liam. How, how many years until he gets those cauliflower years? <laughs> no, jujitsu is very, um, very safe in that regard because it's non-striking. No, no, the cauliflower is from, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. from the rolling, isn't it? When they're like rubbing. Uh, I'm not sure. Sure. That's, That's where it's from. No, it's not getting punched no, in the side no, of the no, head. I'm, I'm no, no jujitsu <laughs> expert, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't get cauliflower. Because you, you get them in rugby as well. Yeah, in rugby, no. you get them in the scrum because they're rubbing in the scrum. Yeah, it's mainly, mainly uh, you're going you're gonna to get them from like boxing and MMA, yeah, for sure. But jujitsu is pretty. Um, but jujitsu, you're rolling, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get it from rolling. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take your um, your word for it. Yes, yeah. yeah. just yeah. keep an eye on this. <laughs> Watch his ears. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, let's take a quick break and we'll be back. Hope you've been enjoying this conversation. Uh, after the break, what to expect? We will be playing the one word game with a twist and we might even get into some more rants. See you on the other side of this one. Do you want me to music outro? Yep. It's, it's the Wolf Pack, yeah, the Wolf Pack. Recent Mark and Adrian on the Wolf Pack. Uh, not our official theme song. Thank it is you. now. It is official theme song. <laughs> hey, hey, folks. I hope you're enjoying this episode of the Wolf Stand. Hey, are you looking to get in the best shape of your life? Are you looking at competing? Sure am, Mark. The folks here <laughs> at Enterprise Fitness, uh, we've trained over 250 first place winners in a variety of different disciplines, uh, mainly the physique sport. So bikini, fitness, How many before figure, and afters, Mark? Thousands, thousands. Of before and afters, not hundreds of thousands, <laughs> thousands of before and afters, quite literally speaking? thousands of before and afters. We've changed many people's Are we sponsoring lives. our own show? We are sponsoring okay. our own show. That's that's exactly what's <laughs> happening. Thanks for telling the focus. So Enterprise <laughs> Fitness, if you want to come train with us, the team here at Enterprise Fitness, it's melbournepersonaltraining.com or email yep. info at enterprisefitness.com or give us a call, 1300-887-143. That email again, Adrian? Um, 
Info, info at, at enterprisefitness.com.au. Enterprise and the website, Reese Is uh, www.melbournepersonaltrainers.com. That's the one. Our other sponsor is personaltrainermentoring.com. Are you a personal trainer? Are you looking to grow your career, get better results for your clients and grow your business? Visit personaltrainermentoring.com. We have a free trainer value pack or a free trainer pack, transformation pack valued out of $500, which includes- What's in that pack? It, it, thank you, Reese. It includes three eBooks uh, all around growing your business, doubling your, your rates, getting 15 high paying clients in 30 days. And the other one is the five most ex the five experiences expensive mistakes personal trainers make okay. and also if that wasn't enough also included a full uh, video e-class of how yep. to structurally assess and screen your clients i've seen that personally it's, mm -hmm. it's of quality yeah, it is of quality it's the exact screening procedures that we use here at enterprise fitness which is the overhead squat test clat test and can't tell you the rest because you got to download it yeah. it's personal trainer mentoring.com i can't recommend it enough i started off as a one of your mentors mentorees 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 yes, yes, and, um, yes you did. fell in love with the place and, yeah, and fell in love with Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, for the audio, I just reached over and touched his face. That's cool. Right. Awesome. Personaltrainermentoring.com. Go visit Welcome it. Welcome back to the Wolf's Den. Patreon, Reese, Mark, and Adrian. Thanks, folks. Welcome back to the Wolf's Den. And thank you, Adrian. I uh, always wanted a, a theme song. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I noticed that uh, this is called DadBod 2.0. So what happened to the first dad boy? Waited an hour into the uh, podcast to ask that question, <laughs> Reese. It's really proud of himself. I was waiting dad for the punchline and, and it just never came. I think Mark came up with it, the dad bod 2.0. I think the idea was that um, dad bod was like the, the soft body guy who got comfortable, um, you know. Not, was that ever you, Adrian? What's that? Was that ever you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. No, no, I've always been um, hard, hard bodied. Um, <laughs> You might want to add the body part there. Body, yeah, that's the body part. It's been hard. hard. Uh, very hard. Hard bodied. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, Dad Bod 2.0 is the uh, not letting, you know, life get in the way of it, uh, doubling down when you do get to that point. I felt like I doubled down, definitely. Um, and he became Dad Boy. Dad, dad boy. boy. Dad Boy. <laughs> dad Boy. <laughs> like the worst superhero dad. ever. Dad boy. <laughs> Teenage pregnancy, man. <laughs> Teenage pregnancy. Man. This is dad boy. He's a dad and he's a boy still. <laughs> Sorry. I'll, uh, I'll pitch this to uh, Marvel Studios. <laughs> Marvel, the great new Avenger coming soon. Dad boy. Oh, if he doesn't make it, he'll join the uh, yeah. Justice League. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Those losers. <laughs> All righty. Well, um, with that, does that answer your question? <laughs> what, are we close? <laughs> Do we hit the mark there? Is that, so, you got no, it now? No, no, All right. Okay. So um, let's let's get into the, uh, the the favorite part of the episode that we all love to play. It's called the one word game. And we've come prepared this time yeah. with um, some scratchy notes. Look at that for uh, – production value all so right so first. the way the way we're gonna we're gonna work this one this time we're gonna do it a little bit differently than what we've done in the past instead of going around in circles uh we're gonna gang up let's start with adrian um it will be you and i reese we i'm gonna say a word you're gonna say a word i'm gonna say a word until all of our words okay. on our list are okay. exhausted and adrian it's one word slash uh, one sentence, one phrase, Mark, one rant. Do you want to know what's on the tip of this? Like what's what's about to come out? I don't know if you're ready for it. I don't know if I'm ready for it either. <laughs> okay. uh, I, I don't know, but uh, but we'll, we'll see. And um, yeah, you know, we might have to. Yeah, we'll probably have to do some solid editing later. Solid we'll editing. See. We can yeah. put the beep 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 in it. In, <laughs> all right. First uh, yeah. All right. So the okay. military. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> former job. <laughs> Current program. Current program. Uh, I think I'm doing um, Project Shredded as Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's a B-Pack one. It's good fun. Uh, jo Jocko Willings. Jocko Willings. Um, uh, yeah, inspirational. That guy's awesome. He's just, um, yeah, if no one's heard of him, go check him out. He um, he just gets shit done. Find, follow him on Instagram. He just posts a photo of his watch every day at 4.30. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool. Current nutrition. Current nutrition. Current nutrition. 
Current nutrition. Um, playing around with keto at the moment, just for shits and gigs. Um, I'm no by How no means. How are you means. finding it? Um, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, it's hard to get that much fat. In. Not too good either. Not too good. <laughs> <laughs> well, not, not too bad. Not, not too, too good. Did, did you have a better experience than Mark? Um, well, I've only just started. It's been two weeks in. And you're doing cyclical keto, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So, so you um, put carbs around your workout? Uh, not yet. So I'm doing so like just one on the carb refeed on the weekend, one meal, oh. um, and then seeing how that goes. So yeah, it's um, yeah, I haven't. I'm so carbs just it. from vegetables? That's it. Yes. Yeah. Just mostly leafy green type stuff. Yeah. So I'm just um, having a go, see what it's like, see and what these ketones are all about. How much carbs are we talking about? Uh, geez, off the top of my head. Um, I was having about 225 protein, um, 200 fats, carbs sitting around 54, 50 odd. Yeah. So you eat a lot of butter and ghee and coconut yeah, oil so and olive oil. It's hard to get that in. Are like, I, won't get, I won't hit 200 every day. Are you checking ketones? No, nah, not no. yet. I'll check. I'm trying. I've got to get my hands on a blood glucometer. Mm. So here we go. Might meet you. I, I went. Oh, dad bod. Nutrition. Yeah. Dad bot. Yeah. 2.0. 2.0. <laughs> it's here. It's just dad yeah. bot is now. It's underneath the uh, Punisher t-shirt. It's underneath the Punisher t-shirt. Yeah. It's, it's, there it is. Yeah. It's built on, built on iron. Side shaft. Side shaft. <laughs> Side shaft. <laughs> Side shaft. I just think it's Robin Cock. <laughs> I was watching. Like, I was watching. Moving on. What the fuck Side are you talking shaft. about? I was watching. Jo- <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Can we please elaborate on Side shaft? Slide shaft. I was watching the comedian Joe. What's his last name? It's Rogan. 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 Joe Rogan. I was watching Joe Rogan, and he on his comedy act, yeah. he was talking about you know how girls do side boob. He said <laughs> slide, <laughs> slide, slide shaft. shaft. What if a guy was doing side shaft? <laughs> so I was just wanted to get everyone's opinion. Robin so Cock was accurate. <laughs> right, uh, it was yeah. accurate. Um, Reese Adams. Reese <laughs> side, shaft. side shaft. Oh, I got a side shaft now. Fair enough. Oh. Favorite food. <laughs> Favorite food. Hamburgers. Liam Fitzgerald. Liam Fitzgerald. Small. <laughs> in Liam. height. <laughs> He's quite not, not his side shaft. Not his side shaft. <laughs> least favourite food. Liam's? <laughs> no, yours. Mine. Your, your least favourite oh, food. Oh, my <laughs> least favourite food. Um, let me think about that one. I would say probably the most, I think, honestly, overrated one is donuts. I just think it's overrated. It's just a ball of fucking flour. It's so shit. <laughs> it's true. And they just mostly just put shit on top of them now. It's, it's overrated. Um, fuck donuts. Fuck donuts. Donuts. Comfort food? <laughs> comfort food. Hamburger. Oh, I don't really have a comfort food. There's nothing I really rely on. Um, uh, I think that you smother all over your body late at night when you're... <laughs> <raving> <laughs> peanut shaft. butter. It's peanut butter <laughs> on my side shaft. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sloss. Sloths. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm useless. How are they still alive? I don't get sloths. It's a good point. They're fuck, like, I've never thought of that. On an evolutionary path, how has that thing lasted so long? It's, um, yeah. Uh, James Kelly. James Kelly. Um, hard to understand sometimes. <laughs> Favorite type of music? Um, I would say rap. I'll do like rap. That's what I like to listen to when I work which, out. Which rapper are you? Uh... Um, oh, I like a bit of Logic at the moment. He's pretty good. I've never heard Sharp of that lyrics, rhythmic flow, yeah, you know, all that cool. good stuff. Favorite yeah. supplement? Favorite supplement. Alpha GPC, even though I don't really know what it does. It's just magic in a bottle. <laughs> uh, vegan cats. Vegan, <laughs> vegan cats. Oh, cruel. It's cruel. Don't make your cats vegan. Uh, Tyler Cosnet. Tyler Cosnet, tall. <laughs> Ice cream. <laughs> oh, ice cream, delicious. Um, what yeah. flavor? Uh, I'm all about that salted caramel. Yeah, me too. Mm. Um, I believe you already asked you though, current training program. Yeah. Yeah, he did. All right, so I'm moving to my next one. Uh, this is my last one, mm-hmm. actually. When the world ends, Adrian is... Is um, a nomad. <laughs> I'm just going to cruise, cruise around riding a motorcycle. Like Mad Max. Yeah, like Mad Max style, but on a motorcycle. Basically Mel Gibson. Yeah, basically Mel Gibson. Except less racist. <laughs> <laughs> what would your name be if it wasn't Adrian? <laughs> um, I, I, <laughs> I really like this one. This is one. Um, I, <laughs> I recently, for shits and gigs, put in to the Wu-Tang Clan um, rap name finder. Right. So um, I heard... <laughs> 
<laughs> and it came out with mm. Daswami. So I'm going to go with that. Okay. Daswami. <laughs> that would be That's all I'll be known as. Yeah. Okay. Daswami. Can you spell that for us? Um, D A S W A M I. Okay. What else have you got? No, that's it. That's it. Down. Let's give Adrian a round of applause. Yay. All right. Reese. Oh, you pick on me. Yeah. Oh, mm. you won't. Yeah, we'll pick on you. Let's go pick on you. It's not picking. We're just going to yeah, ask no. you some Hey, you know what a friend told me what racism actually stands for in the Urban Dictionary? What's that? Do you know what it stands no, for? No, I don't know what racism stands can, for. Can we please look this? Can you get it, Adrian? While I don't have my phone with me. While we're going through this. He'll put it up on the screen. Reese's How's that? It. But we've got, to, we've got to say it for the audio. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll come back to it. Yeah. We'll park that as a note and then mm. we'll come back to that one. What racism? Uh, all right, Reese, you ready? Let's do right. it. A guilty pleasure. Oh, that, that's come on, Mark. You put me on the spot like that. <laughs> all right. Well, a gu- a gu- uh, guilty, pass, I guess. Oh, I'm gonna say. A gu- guilty pleasure. Uh, my rice cakes with peanut butter and jam. Oh, yeah. The teddy bear picnic. Yeah. Eggs. Nice at yeah. night. I thought you were going to say fertilized. Fertilized, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I was hoping he was going to come up with that. Hey, that, 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 that yeah, that's that why good. you have children and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Because I don't fertilize my eggs. <laughs> Sodium. Sodium? Yeah. <laughs> uh, great pumps. Yeah, juicy. <laughs> What's your favorite program that you've ever done? Can I change that to toughest program? Yeah, but it's yeah, your favorite. Favorite. It's just one that always comes to mind. It was um, eight by eight yeah. and it was 69 sets and it was over six days. So it's it was like 414 sets for the week. Wow. And yeah, Sounds it destroyed disgusting. me. So I, I, eight I, by eight over six days. So yeah. every day you trained. Eight by eight. Yeah. yeah. And it was eight by eight was by eight like? by eight by eight by eight. <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? Like, like, so there was eight by eight, and then there eight was by eight, eight exercises eight. of eight, 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 eight by eight. So imagine eight by eight traditionally was A one, A two, B one, B two. It was A one, A two, B one, B two, C one, C two, D one, D two, and then the E was like calves or abs. <laughs> Just why not? How long did that take you? About two and a half hours. Yeah, wow, solid. that's uh, yeah. that's solid. That's good. Uh, favorite supplement. Probably uh, personally, I really like the. Digestive enzymes, just because I personally have um, ha- always had good experience with them. Reese, I really want to know this about you. What's your pet peeve? Pet peeve. Like, what annoys you? <laughs> I don't think I have an obvious one. Yeah. Um, I just like, I don't know, to be treated as an equal. So I guess when I'm not, that's probably a pet peeve. Oh, that's, yeah. It's deep. <laughs> <laughs> deep, deep nights deep. with Reese Adams. Uh, carb up food. Carb up food. Ooh. Favorite carb up food? Uh, cereal. Exo Crunch. Or uh, actually, Exo and Maple together. Ooh, now you're living large. Mm-hmm. Uh, magic tricks. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy them. Okay, cool. <laughs> What's your favorite magic trick? I don't have any specific ones, but I enjoy a good show. Okay, good. Yeah. Brendan Wang. Hi, Brendan. <laughs> uh, magic tricks. <laughs> <laughs> A great guy and very entertaining, good to be around. Great guy. So, Brendan, if, if those of you who haven't watched the show, Brendan lives with Reese. Brendan, hi. We love you. Incredible pair. Incredible. Um, mine's... Mm. What's, your, what's, your, what's your opinion on the sun? <laughs> I love the sun. <laughs> friend or foe? Friend or foe. <laughs> uh, friend in terms of very pleasant, but foe in terms of... Make like I get burnt quite easily, so oh, really, I, I just got a different shade of white. So, <laughs> for, for me, off I, white. For, for me, <laughs> uh, other, than the, white. other than the health, health benefits of the sun, yeah. I don't see the benefit of going in the sun to get a tan because, yeah. like, it, for me, it's a waste of time. Yeah. I can't get a tan. You melt like my next question What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Salted caramel. You can't have any. <laughs> 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 Lactose intolerant, motherfucker. <laughs> I guess it's dairy free stuff. <laughs> There's some good stuff out there, dairy free. Um, least favorite body part to train? Oh, uh, probably, probably calves or arms. Yeah. You don't like training arms? Just don't like training? No, not you don't anymore. Like training arms. Ever since I hurt my shoulder, I just I have to do single arm stuff, and it's just so time consuming. Mm. Occlusion training. Uh, very, very painful, but enjoyable. Like childbirth. <laughs> you guys would know I, I don't know that one I wouldn't know <laughs> I, I, I didn't deliver I my baby 
My part you, was over you very quickly. Were you guys in the room? Yeah, it was yeah, exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> which, end, which end were you at? <laughs> it is hard for guys. We had to like, I had to like sit around for a while and couldn't get much sleep because she kept moaning. <laughs> Thanks, which, which end were you at? This. End? Oh, no. Um, I stayed to the end. side, off the to the end. side. Oh, really? Off to the side, yeah. I think it's so, so you the didn't, other end. You didn't see it? No. Uh, she ended up being cesarean, so okay. I did get to see it come out. Yes, I saw that too. It's awesome. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. It's, it's like from Alien. I got photos. We won't share that. No, no, we won't. <laughs> uh, I think you're, you're right. going to pop that off. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, Hello. Any, any Food. Others? What about it? What comes to mind? Uh, fuel. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. Uh, favorite bodybuilder? I want to say, oh, I like, really like Kevin Lavrone. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why? I just think what he achieves in short periods of time is very. Impressive. Mm. Them genetics. Mm. Favorite body part to train? Legs. Favorite movie? Billy Madison. Favorite chick flick? I really like um, the one with the the black guy and he does the titty dance. Um, oh, um, white, white chicks. White chicks. Oh, yeah, white yeah, chicks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, with Terry, whatever his name is. Terry Crews. That's mm. the one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's quite well, is that it? Yep. Uh, well, uh, last one. When the world is ending, Reese is uh, riding in my sidecar. <laughs> yeah. Counting macros. Is it counting macros. <laughs> uh, enjoying life. Oh, there you go. <laughs> enjoying life. And everything else is falling apart. <laughs> oh, I can relax now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite staff member. <laughs> I knew I was going to get fucking hammered on this one. I knew. I already seen the answer to that one. So. Um, you already seen the answer to that one. Did you I'm going to elect myself. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you dick. <laughs> well, it's, I can't really. No comment yeah. otherwise. Okay, fair enough. It's, um, funny Dave, as, David's pretty good though. David's pretty. Good. I knew you were going to say you wanted you yeah, to. He's my brother. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so it's, nice, I got to say my brother. Favorite restaurant. Ooh, um, Ooh. Palomero is very good. Palomero. Uh, favorite restaurant just talking to the mic you're getting a cue favorite the, restaurant uh, the videographer uh, Palomero Pal Palomero am I saying where right? is that or Vudemon Vudemon uh, where's, Vudemon's very where's good where's Palomero Palomero is is it the same oh, price as Vudemon no no Vudemon is much higher price uh, Palomero makes steaks Argentinian steaks um, where is, is South it Bank? do they have no, a dress code no, no, no it is, there is one on South Bank oh, yeah it's there really is, good and not Been really because I went in there with powerlifting <laughs> socks <laughs> Um, and I ate there with, on, with my powerlifting socks just after a big deadlift <laughs> workout. Uh, it's, um, where is it? Like uh, Chinatown? If you keep going, oh shit. Keep going down Chinatown. What street's that called? Which Chinatown? Which Chinatown? Are we in the city? Are we in, in Box Hill? Are we're we in the city. We're in the city. <laughs> we're, we? we're in the city. <laughs> Lon not Lonsdale. I don't know. But Palomero, the one in, off Collins, off Collins, whatever that street's called. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Comic alter ego. My comic alter? Yeah. Oh, his yeah, name's, yeah, his name's Cram. It's Mark spelled backwards. And I feel like the Cram the Crusher. <laughs> an, actual, an actual character. Oh, yeah, made I made it, made it up. Cram the Crusher is the Cram. opposite of Mark. It's Mark spelled backwards. It's the alternative dimension. What does he do? Mark. What's his superpower? Um, well, he has blonde hair instead of... That's not a superpower. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to say what's his superpower? Um, well, his superpower can be that... Um, I don't know. He does can, everything the opposite of what you do. He he can he can grant wishes. <laughs> it's just, so it's a genie. It's a comic book old. No, he except he can grant his own wishes. So yeah. that's that's pretty cool. So you can basically have any superpower that he wants. That was a disappointing answer. Well, I feel like <laughs> I feel like if your superpower is that you can grant your own wishes, you can have any power that you want. It's okay. it's infinite. So okay. yeah. yeah, that or um, Professor Xavier's powers, I think, would be pretty cool. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Just reading yeah. thoughts. Professor X. Yeah. Yeah. Favorite food. Favorite food, probably steak. Yeah, mm. cooked well. Cooked, yeah. Yeah, cooked well. I oh, not, you no, like no, it. rare, like medium rare, but a, a <laughs> good like steak. A good steak is you can't go wrong with a good steak. Okay, it needs yeah. to be cooked. Yeah, and correctly. butter. I probably have to say butter is my favorite food. Butter, because I do. What about steak and butter together? Yeah, steak that, and butter. That's good. And and a little bit of dark butter. chocolate, like eighty percent, ninety percent. Yeah, not on, on the, the steak. <laughs> no, 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 not on the steak. Yeah. What's your trainer pet peeve? Oh. um not paying attention to exercise execution. Okay, I like it. Yeah, thanks. Favorite program that you've done? Um, I really liked 753, 753 Waveload. 
that was that was fun. Um, yeah, let's go with that. Mm. Um, your <clears throat> let's go funniest staff member. Oh, have to be Jaden Younger. <laughs> it wouldn't be fair if I didn't ask you this as well. Okay, but side shaft. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Rogan. <laughs> Side shops. Side shops. <laughs> um, Enterprise fitness. Or should I say coming up on Instagram soon? <laughs> uh, yeah, what? Enterprise fitness? <laughs> Not on the Enterprise fitness account. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, that's the, that's the, that's oh, the word. Oh, Enterprise fitness. Yeah. The, the leaders and the pinnacle of all things personal training. Yeah, good. Sounds like an amazing place. It is an amazing place. Thanks. Whippets. Uh, Reese Adams. Reese Adams. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> Reese Adams. Um, staff member with the best hairline. Oh, oh, um, hair, dude. Reese Adams. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's starting to recede. I had three no, set ups there and you didn't name me once. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's still waiting for his name. been waiting for you to mention He's me. I thought that was the one that I was going to get mentioned. Oh, Adrian Brando? Thank you. <laughs> He knew the answer he wanted. Just yeah, asked him so many different. I knew ways. it was going to be one of the face. Kanye West. Favorite. Kanye West. Um, I like his music. It's, You're a big fan. That's what yeah, I, I like I'd his music. It. I like his music. I'm not a big fan. I'm saying like a, I don't wear like Yeezys or anything like that. I don't wear his like fashion stuff. I just like to put it on sometimes in the gym. That's good stuff. Yeah, he's he's um, lyrical genius. I'm a what? He's a lyrical genius. Uh, That's what he says. Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I think Eminem's probably more lyrically genius inclined. <laughs> Personally, I like his oh. lyrics a, a bit deeper. Sorry, Kanye. I still like your music. Because yeah. <laughs> Kanye's like... listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so is Eminem. We're listening together. Hack squat machine versus reverse hyper. Um, well, the hack squat machine wouldn't fit where the reverse hyper <laughs> is, uh, in case you're wondering. It just it, It's not going to fit. So... Um, we can make it. That's why we've got the reverse hyper. And also the other yeah. thing is if you can squat, then, you, you know, it's not really a substitute. You've got to look at functionality. So there is no other way to mimic what the reverse hyper does. Mm -hmm. So the reverse sure. hyper gives you load from the reverse of obviously hyperextension, putting it directly through the glutes and the hamstrings. Mm -hmm. Whereas a hack squat, I mean, obviously is very similar to a normal squat. Um, and you can get the same stimulus from a squat. Like, yes, it's a different machines, different angles, all this kind of stuff. But when it not really efficient comes, space wise, it's not efficient space space wise. It's not like I was really looking at what movement patterns do we need to incorporate more mm. of, and that's how I came to the conclusion of like you say, I get a leg press, yeah, but why? I'm going to teach people how to squat. Yeah, it's not a movement pattern that you need to learn how to do a leg press. Yep. Whereas reverse hyper is a completely different movement pattern than everything else. Yeah. So if I want to train, train that posterior chain in that direct movement, then I need a reverse hyper. So to answer your next question, what other piece would I get next? It would not be a leg press and it would not be a hack squat. Would it would actually get? be a standing leg curl. Um, ah, I like it. Yes, that would be yeah. the next piece because it's very hard to mimic. Yeah. And I'd make sure I'd get a cable one, not a plate loading one because okay. a plate loading one, yeah, the strength terrible. curve is not correct. Like, because yeah. when you come up to look um, it, on the plate, plate loading leg curls, a uh, single leg, the, the, it, there's, no, there's not enough tension at the top. I mean, Plus, some companies yeah. are putting like the uh, lever arm further out so you can put plates so that it fixes the strength curve problem. But most people, most companies just put... Um, the lever arm exactly in the same place so when you curl it there's no there's no real tension at the top yeah. which is the opposite of what you want you want most tension at the top yeah. so this is where if you use a cable standing leg curl you're going to get a lot more tension on the strength curve so yeah. you, you machines is all about strength curves you yeah. really got to look at where the pressure is applied because that's going to have the biggest impact of how much weight you have to use so you're always looking at when you're purchasing a machine how it's designed if it's you know Got that right effect on oh, the strength. Yeah, yeah correct. Yeah, cool. yeah, absolutely. And and this, when you said before about measuring, I actually measured everything. I measured the, yeah. the longest pieces of equipment and the longest piece of equipment is the seated row. And I measured two centimeters out of that and I measured a line and said, right, this is where all the non-movement if that makes it machines are in yep. the one spot so there's no movement that's created so you can chuck all the machines in a line and no one's yeah. going to get in each other's way because they're on the machine right so that's why the, the space and the functionality works so well and also a lot of other yeah. uh, uh I suppose um secret recipe things yeah. and want to know a fun fact yes yeah, sure i actually do you remember this i actually because you sent me the measurements and i put them on paper remember mm. and then so you can move them around yes 
Yeah. yeah. So when we started, we got out an A4 piece of paper and we measured all the machines and we made like little blocks. Yeah. And Reese is like, you know what you should do? He had a really good idea. He's like, you should make little like blocks and do it on a piece of paper. Yeah. So we, we got out a floor plan and moved everything around. Because imagine awesome. putting yeah. it somewhere and be like, oh, no, yeah, I don't actually want it there. Yeah, yeah, you've got to move, move it. Done that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You <laughs> don't want to do that. So yeah, good. Yeah. Have you, questions? It's brilliant. Yeah. Oh. Vegan cats. Oh, vegan cats. Yeah, that's cool. Why would you? Cats are meant to eat. I agree. Things. I just wanted to educate the listeners. That oh, yeah, there's that's no such thing as a vegan cat. Like, you've got to give them <laughs> oh, meat and Look things. it up. It's funny. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. They're sound, miserable. They've only got one <laughs> sounds, foot in a grave. <laughs> sounds mean. Yeah. You're done, aren't you? I'm done. Oh. We doubled up in a lot. I've got a good one for you. Okay, sure. Favorite book for PTs? Favorite book for PTs? It's meant to be a shameless plug. Just you know, oh, say your books. Oh, oh, sure. <laughs> Favorite book. Know, okay, books yes. that you've created. So go to <laughs> personaltrainermentoring.com and download your free trainer transformation pack, which includes three of my ebooks. Uh, they would be my favorite books. Yes, yeah. yes. I, I like where you're going with that question. Thank you for the shameless plug. <laughs> and once go. they download those, what else, which other book would they get? Um, they would get, they would join Wolfpack. And then in Wolfpack, <laughs> they'd get all my course material and the hundreds of hours on the course website, which has over now 350 yes. hours of videos and course material from uh, me and, and you are on there as well. And a variety of different presenters like Andrew Locke, Tony mm -hmm. Doherty, Sebastian Orb, Bob Gill, the list goes on and on and on. So they could get that resource. They could get the videos of the courses that have gone. Andre been, Ben Wise on there. Andre well, Ben Wise on there as well. We've been filming since 2016, and you know we've ran what 25 days on average, 20 25 days on average per like year in terms of the courses that we filmed. So it's a lot of filming, plus all the group calls that mm -hmm. happen every month, plus uh, all the one on one calls that I've done and put up on the site. There's a lot of stack of that. So it's like the PhD for personal trainers who are really looking to step up their career. I would and, arguably say there's so much content on there you can't get through all of it. Oh, it's the, no, you won't get through like, it. It's the Netflix for personal trainers. So the, the, the whole idea is that when you're on the couch and you really want to grow your business and you're sitting there and you're like, all right, what what do I watch tonight? It's, well, mm. click on. I need to learn about business. I need to learn about sales. I need to learn about yeah, you've nutrition. Got the, the drop tab, take your right yeah, there. Okay, I'm gonna do sales today. I'm gonna to sales yeah, mindset. Let's correct. have a look at that. It's not, not, not necessarily expected, but you know, over the over the next couple of years, or well, years, over the next couple of months rather, um, I'll probably be developing, when I say probably, I mean, I already have developed Sales Mastery, which is a whole course where trainers can go through um, and teach them the exact how to sell. And I've developed Marketing Mastery as well, um, which trainers can go through and do the actual course and learn the actual whole system of that. So Sales Mastery is available on personaltrainermentoring.com. And then I'm developing Nutrition Mastery, which is the art of consultation um, and how to actually consult as a trainer. And then we're gonna be doing Training Mastery, which will be more of a face-to-face. -face. There'll be some online, like Training Mastery and, sorry, Nutrition Mastery and Sales Mastery. Nutrition Mastery isn't developed yet, but Training Mastery, uh, Sales Mastery is. So those two will be completely online. Training Mastery, there'll be a big component of that where we'll be offline as well because you need to learn training and then there'll also be real rehabilitation they've had a screen nice. assess yeah. um interwoven into that as well so yeah big things happening and basically it's an all-in-one resource for trainers um to basically what it, wherever they're they're at to essentially help them out um because i suppose i'm solving that void in myself of uh you know when i was a trainer getting started back in 2006 you know i didn't have anyone i made a lot of mistakes yeah. lost a lot of money didn't earn a lot of money and um you know I want to raise the standard of personal training worldwide. So this is what uh, I'm committed to. Awesome. Yeah. And These Adrian, is committed you're to. a mentoree. So how was your experience off the website? Yeah, brilliant. It's why I, you know, it's what brought me here. I love everything he does. Like I said, we as soon as I walk, he hasn't in these got doors, Stockholm syndrome. A little bit, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is good. I like Mark Otterbrook. It is the right. I'll give it you some food right. tonight. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, um, you know, like I said, as soon as I walk in here, it's like we're talking about it's like a spiritual thing. This was the place I wanted to make my church. This is the, um, you know, yeah, this is it. Like you said, he's very thought out and everything he did. He's uh, very careful in everything he does. And yeah, in terms of it's just perfect. Yeah. Probably the nicest thing you've ever said to me. It's the only thing <laughs> the nice, nice that I'll ever say to you. So. Um, final thoughts, gentlemen. Just have that on a tape recorder. Yeah, no, it's play great. I'm going to play back. <laughs> <laughs> remember when you said that nice thing to me? Do you remember? I've got it. Uh, final thoughts, gentlemen. Final thoughts. Um, I guess uh, what would Dad Bod 3.0 look like? Me. No, no. Uh, <laughs> Adrian competing is dad bod 3.0. Mm, my next comment. Yeah, dad bod 3.0, then 4.0, then 3.5, 6, 0.0. Um, 
yeah, final thoughts. I think it's um, not being um, your why being bigger than your excuses. Um, you know, if you want this, go after it, make it a priority, stop um, piss farting around. Yeah, well, my final thoughts are everyone has the same amount of time. Yeah. Uh, we've all got 168 hours in a week. And I think you really quickly early in the piece, you should identify uh, yourself as you either have more time than money or money than time. And this is irregardless of how much money you have. It's you either have the money to say uh, allocate to you know a personal trainer or you have the money to allocate to food prep or you have the time to do your own food prep or you have the time to you know um, write your own training program so you need to choose which one it is for you are you are you less time more money or more time less less money and once you make that choice i think for me things start becoming uh, a lot clearer because let's say you say i have i have i don't have the time but i have the money therefore you have to make a choice that i'm going to invest in these things rather than spend the time doing it you might spend money on like someone to do your meal prep C for correct you. Mm. because you take responsibility like this is the the realms of what i'm i'm working with so i think that as a frame uh of, of making decision making can be very very helpful mm. for people and then again it just comes down to time allocation and and looking at your schedule looking at your diary booking in the non-negotiables if you're breaking those deals ask yourself why are you breaking those deals and it might mean that you need to have a buddy a personal trainer to meet you at the gym at these particular times yeah. so you can stick to the things anyway folks i'm getting hey, the hey, signal hey. Yeah. one last thing for me um so something yeah. i just thought of like for me if i don't book in time for me to train and i end up training more and more clients and not training myself i end up being a worse coach because yeah. i become very irritable so yeah. that's just a thought that i just had then irritable like a bow like, yeah, like, like IBS, IBS, <laughs> yes, except your IPS, irritable person syndrome. <laughs> IPS, yeah, irritable person syndrome. Uh, look if, it up, it's a thing, Google. If so, IBS was a person, it'd be Mark, a toe break. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, thank you for watching The Wolf's Den. Uh, this was Adrian's no nice first things. episode and consequently last, <laughs> last episode <laughs> on The Wolf's Den. No, but seriously, folks, we hope you have enjoyed this episode uh, with Adrian, Reese, and myself. Till next time, folks, train hard, eat well, and supplement smart. Isn't it sleep smart? No, no. that's Reese's. Okay. <laughs>